So last time I mentioned the name of a theorem, it's called Menger's theorem, and it's probably the most important theorem that we're going to use uh, regularly about k-connectivity in graphs. Menger's theorem says that I can find something in particular in my graph. If you remove some vertices, it says there exist paths as long as you remove fewer than k vertices. Um, and that's kind of the key idea, is that you can remove vertices and you'll still have paths. And exactly what these paths might look like, or what kinds of paths you can really guarantee to exist, is really the heart of what Menger's theorem tells us. Okay, so here's kind of my summary of that, right? So, um, you know, K-connectivity saying there doesn't exist the separator, and Menger's theorem is going to tell us that there is something that will exist, and I'll give you the hint, right? The hint here is that um, it's going to be some paths, right? So Menger's theorem will tell us that for K-connected graphs, we do have uh, certain paths that must exist in the graph. And But before I can really state this, um, the theorem and the proof, which we'll get through all in this video, uh, I want to just give some definitions of certain kinds of paths that are interesting and relevant to us. So, um, two paths are disjoint if, well, they don't touch, right? They don't share any vertices, they don't share any edges. And if we think about paths in terms of homomorphisms, that's like saying the image of one path P intersected with the image of the other path Q is empty, right? So this is just like disjointness of sets. Um, this is disjointness of graphs. You know, the image of the homomorphism is going to be a subgraph. And this is another subgraph, so they don't share any vertices, they don't share any edges, right? In, in pictures, you know, you think of them as paths that just don't touch at all. Now, a similar but different notion is if paths can be independent, this is like being disjoint, but it means that they may they share the beginning and end point. So in this case, these are A, B paths. So they start at a vertex A, and they end at a vertex B. And so one path might look like this, and the other path looks like this. So other than A and B, they are disjoint. This is like saying that the image, let's just write it first like this, the path as a homomorphism just as a function on the vertices. So the vertices in one path intersect the vertices of the other path is going to only equal just those two endpoints A and B. Um, and since they're paths, right, they can't actually visit these A and B more than once, right? They have to be injective. If we were to write this in terms of the image of P intersect the image of Q, well, that's really, uh, I put the empty set here, but I really meant the empty graph. And if I want to write this as a graph, it would be a graph that has vertices A and B and no edges, right? These are number of vertices and edges of the graph. Okay, so this is what it means for two graph, two paths, in this case two AB paths, right? Start, same start and ends, to be independent. Um, and here they're disjoint. So they're very closely related. Um, and we're going to need both for the, for the proof of Menger's theorem. Okay. And now here's kind of where I think the theorem starts. If you take a two-connected graph, you might um, look at the following. You might say, well, you know, it seems like there ought to be two independent paths between any two vertices. We saw in the case for adjacent vertices, we found a second path. We did that in the last video. But let's take A and B here. If I have one path here, Even if the graph is too connected, I might not have any path that doesn't use some of these same very, uh, vertices, right? So I might not have a path which is independent of the one I've drawn. On the other hand, I know it's too connected, so I might try the following funny trick. Is I might say, look, let's try to remove this vertex and then route a path around it. Now this is just a cartoon. This is not really what it's going to look like, but maybe there's another path that gets around here like that. And on the other hand, I might also try removing, you know, this one instead, and then I might get a path that routes around it. I know that for any one of these vertices that I remove, I've always got some way to route a path around it. And it might not really look like this, but it seems like there's something, there should be paths like this. And what I see, let me color one blue so it's obviously different. You see that if I put these together in the right order, it does seem like I get two different, two independent paths, right? This blue one along the top and this red one along the bottom. 
And so Menger's theorem is going to tell us that, in fact, this is going to be true, that we really can always find independent paths between pairs of vertices. And this 2 and this 2 will be k and k. So that is, k-connected graphs really will have k independent paths between every pair of vertices. And that's the statement of Menger's theorem. So let's try to write it. Right, so if g is k-connected, then there exist k independent paths between every pair of vertices. Now sometimes this uh, theorem is also written more as like a if and only if statement. The converse is also clearly true. The converse I would say is kind of obvious. Uh, let's see if you believe me on that. So the converse would be saying something like if I have k, let's take k to be 4, if I have k independent paths between every pair of vertices, then I, in order to separate those vertices, I would have to remove at least k vertices, right? So any separator that I pick here, right, has size at least k. Okay, so, um, so if I have between every pair of vertices, if I have k disjoint paths, then clearly I need to remove at least k vertices to separate any pair of vertices. So, so the graph, uh, so that converse statement, if I want to write it, would be something like, if there exists k, oops, I wrote disjoint, I was going to write disjoint, I mean independent, if there exists k independent paths between every pair of vertices in g, then g is k-connected. Okay, so I think that's, um, this is the kind of the easy direction, but the theorem, so I've, the way I've stated it here is we just want to show now that if I do have a k-connected graph, I want to be able to find those independent paths, okay? And I sort of tried to walk through what, what you might uh, first try to do with, um, in the case of two connected graphs, um, but we're going to do it generally for k-connected graphs. So, um, but before I can get to the proof of the main theorem, we're going to prove kind of an alternative version of this, which is going to give us this version of Menger's theorem pretty directly. And it's not phrased in terms of independent paths, but disjoint paths. And what we're going to do to, to get there is first is to find something called a separator. Okay. So mostly um, when we talked about, uh, for Menger's theorem, we're talking about pa between pairs of vertices. Now we have a pair of uh, of sets. So this is a set of vertices A and a set of vertices B, and I want to separate A from B. Okay, And so right, the goal is to have A and B, and I'm going to remove some subset of vertices S such that all the AB paths, that is all paths that go from A to B, have to pass through S. So in other words, G minus S has no A, B paths, right? Maybe path, path that starts in A and ends in B. So um, this picture, though, doesn't actually tell the whole story because it could even be the case that um, I pick A and B to overlap, right? So this seems very strange at first, but uh, there's nothing mathematically wrong with this. If I have A and B here, I have some other path here, then I will choose an S that has to contain all the vertices that are in both. If A and B are not disjoint, this is not a problem. See, each one of these vertices can be thought of as a path of length zero that goes from A to B, right? Because it begins in A and it ends in B, even though it didn't take any steps. So this is actually totally okay. Uh, we're allowing them to be overlapping. It's just clearly the case that in order to be a separator, it must contain the intersection as well. Okay, so this is how you separate two sets. And here is a theorem that's going to get us basically one step away from Menger's theorem. Here's how it goes. All right, so if the minimum AB separator, that's the smallest one, if it has size, of, if it has size K, then we have K disjoint AB paths. In... Um, if we go back to this picture, right, if, if this is the minimum separator, 
Right, because there could be other parts of the graph here that are not in A, B, or S. Let's say whatever it is here. But let's say this separator has size 3, and it's the smallest one. Then I must actually have three paths that go through the separator like this that are disjoint. It's also kind of, hopefully, goes without saying that A and B have to have at least K vertices because if I remove just all of A, then I have no A, B paths, <laughs> or if I remove all of B. Um, so I know I have enough vertices in A and B, and that means I'm actually going to get these three, in this case, disjoint paths from A to B, um, and they each sort of pass through one each for each of the vertices in the separator. So it gives us a kind of a really clear idea of nice paths that we find between uh, sets that are separated. Okay. So this is going to be really the main, the hard part of the proof is to prove this. So, and we're going to do it, as it says here, by induction on the number of edges. And the base case is one I kind of hinted at, is if there's no edges, then the minimum separator is just going to be the intersection of the two sets. Um, right, because every vertex in the intersection counts as one disjoint path of length zero. Okay, now, otherwise, if there are some edges, we can pick some edge. Say u, w, right, that's going to be some edge in the graph. And um, let me draw a picture of it to keep it here. So here's my one edge, u, w, and I'm going to pick some edge in here. So here's a and b. Obviously, if it was just an edge between vertices in a, um, and I could remove it, it wouldn't change the separators from A and B, and, and therefore I would just be done by induction. So I'm going to draw it out here kind of safely. And after I pick this edge, I'm going to let S be the minimum separator of the graph minus this edge. Okay, so if I covered over this edge, uh, whatever I get left, I separate that with S. So that's the minimum, that's the smallest possible separator um, for G. Um, it's an AB separator too, so let me be clear about that. So this is the smallest separator that separates A from B, and G minus that one edge. All right. All right, so if the size of S is at least K, then I'm done, because by induction, By induction, it means that I have a minimum separator of size k, and I have fewer edges now because I threw out the edge uw, so I would have k disjoint paths from a to b that go through s. So I'll just say if s is greater than k, then we're done by induction because we found the paths in, if we find these paths in g minus uw, that's a subgraph, those paths still exist in all of g. All right, so that gives us the paths we want, but that also means that we should assume then that the size of S is strictly less than K. Now, in that case, I claim that the size of S has to be exactly K minus one. And the reason it has to be K minus one and not smaller than that is that we can make this set, let's call it, I'll draw it in red here. I'll call it S sub U and S sub U is S union, the single vertex U. Okay, so I added U into the set. If I removed S U from the graph, I would remove the edge U W, and I would remove this separator, and therefore that would also be a separator for A B, and we already assumed that the minimum separator had size K. Right, so if I found, if, if S itself had K minus two vertices, SU would have K minus 1, which would be smaller than the smallest possible separator, and so that's impossible. Okay, so we know that um, the size of S is equal to K minus 1, um, because again, this SU is a separator, an AB separator in G. And so let's let T be a minimum separator for A and SU. Right, so I'm going to call it a min A S U separator. 
And in pictures, that means that T is some kind of set of vertices in here that separates A from SU. Slide this up. T also separates A from B. And the reason is that, well, to get from A to B, we know you have to get through SU. And so any and since you can't get from A to SU without going through T, then T also separates um, A, B, and G. But we know that the separators in G have to si have size um, at least k. So the size of T has to be greater than or equal to k. And now again, by induction, because this graph here now that doesn't include um, anything on this side of the separator is smaller than G, has fewer edges. Like we removed all the edges coming out. In particular, we just removed this edge UW. So by, by induction, there exists k disjoint paths from A to SU. Right, these are the paths that go through the, the vertices of T. Okay, and at least one of them ends here at U. k disjoint paths A to SU. All right. Now, everything we did here didn't make any special considerations for this side versus this side. For instance, we could also have had SW. Um, I won't draw a big circle on here, but SW could have been S union just the vertex W. And we could have looked at paths from B to S uh, W, which would include all of S here, and it would have one path uh, that ends at W. So, so we can combine these paths, right? We're going to concatenate the paths that go from A to SU, and then from S to B, and also from U to W, and then W to B. All right, so we know we get K minus one paths through S, and then this one path through UW gives us K distinct uh, disjoint paths. So we concatenate these paths with uh, similar paths coming from the other side. Okay. Where, again, the proof on that side is, is exactly symmetric to this one. Okay, so this gives us these K, we kind of constructed the, the K paths by finding K paths that get halfway from A to the mid, to the middle here, and K paths that get from B to the middle. And since S only has K vertices, you know that every endpoint has to be, or every vertex in S actually has to be the end of one of these paths. Okay, and so that gives us the kind of the complete proof of this lemma, which is really going to lead us to Menger's theorem now in just one quick step. Okay, and here's how it goes. Okay, so Menger's theorem is now about independent paths, and so we pick two vertices A and B, and we want to find K disjoint paths from A to B in this graph, and the way we'll do it is, first I'll just do it in pictures here, so A and B are here. We're going to let A be the neighbors of little A here, and let B be the neighbors of little B. Okay, so, so I've got these neighbors, that's A. And I've got uh, some neighbors over here. This is B. And now, since um, the graph is k-connected, any AB separator has to have size at least k. And we also know that the degrees are at least k, right? We saw that. So we know then there are k disjoint paths from A to B. I drew four neighbors here, but maybe k is three, because uh, maybe there's some small separator. So I know I can find at least three disjoint paths. And now what I do is take the disjoint paths from A to B, and I add in, um, extend them by adding A to the beginning and B to the end. Okay. So add A and B to the K 
disjoint AB paths, that's by our previous lemma, and uh, those paths now are independent. Okay, so this means that we have K independent paths between any pair of vertices just by this quick construction. Right? So really all the work was in that last lemma, proving it for entire subsets. So, uh, just to summarize these last two videos here, uh, we talked about K connectivity, right? This kind of r robust version of connectivity. And we worked through a bunch of examples, mostly looking at two connected things. And then we looked at how K connectivity guarantees the existence of certain kinds of paths, in particular disjoint or independent paths. And, um, and this is really encapsulated in this Menger's theorem, right? And now Menger's theorem has this, this positive dimension where it says, hey, if it graph is k-connected, then you must have k-independent paths between every pair of vertices. So if you're in a situation where you need to actually find or prove or guarantee the existence of some paths, Menger's theorem can do it for you.